Welcome everyone, Costine here with my guide for the Protection Warrior for Classic French Season of Mastery. And yes, it's going to be the Protection Warrior, not the Fury Prat Warrior. Fury Prat is going to play a role later on potentially, but at the start of it and throughout all of Molten Core and Blackwing Lair, it's likely you're not going to see that many Fury Prat Warriors. Why is that? Well, first off, we have the removal of World Buffs. Without World Buffs, Fury Prat is significantly less powerful, both in terms of their survivability and their threat. I mean, Fury Prat is uh, trying to create a solution to the problem that Protection Warriors, the Prat Warriors, have, which is that they don't actually scale all that well with gear, because you only have really Shield Slam, and Shield Slam scales primarily off black value. So you do have limitations in terms of how far you can scale in terms of threat from your gear. Fury Prot was a way to solve that by focusing on blood first, by having flurry and rage, dual wielding. That was the solution to the problem and it worked. But it worked because bosses could die very quickly and because we had world boss. Combine those two, you have a very potent uh, mixture, so to speak. But remove world buffs, double HP of bosses, and introduce new mechanics or alter mechanics, and things are going to be a lot more difficult and a lot slower, which is going to put a lot of pressure on healers. And even if we ignore the survival aspect about it, which you absolutely shouldn't ignore, because in classic playing, people would have to switch to a shield on a number of molten core bosses, particularly Galmag, Magmadar, as well. And then, of course, in Black Willing Around the Dragons, Broodlord, Chromagus, Nefarian, I mean, Plenty of switching uh, to using a shield, even as Fury Prot on at least some of those bosses. Um, but even ignoring the survival aspect, you also have to consider that the threat benefit of Fury Prot isn't necessarily going to be there at the start. Later on, with good gear, like full Molten Core gear or good Blackwing Lair gear and, you know, things like Curia, Onslaughter, all that kind of stuff. When you add all, the, all that stuff together, yes, Fury Prot will likely overtake deep protection, but then you also still have to consider the survival aspect. My feeling when it comes to survivability is that it's unlikely to work until AQ. I mean, realistically, you could start playing as Fury Prot even in Blackwing or late Molten Core, but Blackwing Lair has plenty of bosses that are just going to kill you if you try and do that, especially on Horde Alliance. You might have be more forgiving, it might be more forgiving because of Blessing of Kings, but on on the Horde side, less so. So that's going to be an issue. But uh, once you get past Black Air and AQ, I believe the survival aspect is going to be less of a problem. The threat aspect, that's a bit of a discussion because you remove world buffs, you double HP of bosses, you're going to have to gear for more survivability, regardless. And you're going to have to use a shield in a lot more situations than you did before. And so Fury Pro loses a lot of its power because of that. And what I personally think is going to happen, and not just myself, I've talked to people that have played uh, tanks for our classic and really good guilds, and their feeling is it's just going to be a meme at the start. It might become powerful later on, but not at the start, not that in the first few weeks, first few months. Once you get fully decked out in Molten Core gear, maybe then, but then you have the bosses back on air to contend with, so likely not. But that's not to say Fury Proud doesn't have a lot to offer, of course. You know, you have Enrage, you have uh, Flurry, and you have Improved Berserking Rage. And Blood First does scale very well with Attack Power, so those are all benefits. But realistically, what a lot of tanks are going to be using is a spec like this. Uh, 18 points or 17 points in Arms, a uh, couple points in Fury, and 31 uh, points in Protection uh, just to unlock uh, Shield Slam uh, over here. So you're going to uh, go with a build like this. Now, this is not necessarily the build that a lot of people are going to go for, of course, but the goal is to get Impale and get Shield Slam. That's your main goal. Now, here I've sp put points in Improved Thunder Armor, put points in Improved Heroic Strike, gotten two points in Tactical Mastery, so just so I can swap uh, to, uh, swap the Battle Sands and get uh, be, be able to use Mocking Blow. That's my intent here with this particular build. But of course, there's some flexibility, but the main thing is you want to go with Impale and you want to have uh, Shield Slam. So you're going with Deep Prot Impale spec, which is was always an alternative. You can, of course, go more, more defensively. You could go get more crit. You could get more defensive points. You do have choices. You could drop or uh, you could drop Improved Eric Strike if you so desire for more in anticipation, if that's your intended purpose. 
But point is, Shield Slam is going to do more front at the start than Bullet First when you have very little gear. Once you start getting the gear, then that might change. But we'll see how uh, Fury Proud Warrior being forced to use a shield more often than not is going to contend with the deep rot impale spec uh, warrior how that's gonna hold up of course in classic they end up uh, the if your product ended up being significantly better but that was for classic wood world buffs with the scaling world buffs things are going to be different in season of master world buffs were such a game changer world buffs were the main reason why fury protection even worked uh, as well as it did in the first place so you're gonna see a lot more deep protection warriors. And look, of course, some people are gonna try Fury Prod to work. And I'll be honest, it is a lot more fun dual wheel tanking than it is to use Shield Slam. It is a lot more fun. It's it's a lot better from multiple perspectives because you have many of the talents that you'd use for DPS, your damage can be higher. And on top of that, hey, if you wanna go farm in, in the world, like say one of the things I would do personally when I needed some, some gold, and I only had one character, like, of course, a lot of people will have a lot, but if you only want to have one character, one of the things you can do as Fury Prod, you can't, you can't really do anywhere as effectively as Deep Prod, is you can go and say, Scarlet Monastery and kill the mobs, get some gold from it. It's not a lot, but it is a source of income that you can uh, use, so just something uh, to keep in mind. Um, and we're going to have to play more defensive resistance gear is going to be more important across the board. Will we actually have to get a lot of nature resistance gear? I don't know. We'll see what happens when AQ rolls around, what happens then. Uh, but it will certainly be an interesting change of pace compared to what we actually had uh, in Classic where we could just demolish everything in our path uh, due to the strength of the world buffs uh, and the fact that the bosses were pretty much a cakewalk really due to their low HP compared compared to the DPS output that we did have as players. So deep protection gonna be the mainstay for a lot of guilds, maybe some hardcore guilds will really push it to work. Now of course this brings up the problem, fret. How are tanks going to deal with fret? How are guilds and raids going to deal with uh, the fret issue? Because it is gonna, going to be an issue. Well, um, I. I see some guilds thinking about going with a Feral Druid, if that actually is an issue. Because the argument is, well, if if warriors can are if the production warriors are struggling in fret, then we might as well just get the Feral Druid to tank stuff where that's actually relevant because they will be able to do more fret and even potentially have better survivability. Again, without world buffs, Fury Prot is a lot less potent. So don't be surprised if you see some feral druids at the very least running around tanking bosses. You certainly saw uh, that in classic. You're seeing it now in TBC classic. The fret potential is pretty good for them, and they certainly might end up uh, doing very well in classic fresh or not. We just have to, to wait and see. I mean, feral druids. The problem they have is gear. That's the main issue they they actually have in classic. If they had good gear sets. They would do fantastic, really, in Classic Rare. I'm not joking about it. If they, if Feral Druids had a good gear set for dedicated for tanking, they would be fucking amazing. But they don't, so that's why they suffer. But don't dismiss them, don't discuss them. Anyway, with all that being said, let's take a look at uh, the gear. So this is a, a template character that I made on 60 upgrades. Uh, it hasn't any talent uh, points spent I couldn't be bothered with that nor any enchants but I'm just going to go over the gear pieces that can use helmet golem skull uh, helm which you can get from BRD from Magnus a lot of people will probably want to go for gifts uh, skull especially the fire resistance one I prefer golem skull because it has the strength it only has a bit less uh, stamina and uh, and defense so as far as I'm concerned and, and a bit less armor so as far as I'm concerned it's absolutely worth going for golem skull uh, over gift though if you want the higher survivability yeah, you can go get go gifts or uh, maybe enchanted for email if that's even available a uh, necklace uh the best choice is really medallion of grand marshal morris uh or varix color if you can be bothered doing all the steps to get uh, the color it's really a good choice but it's just annoying to have to go for it the neck might actually be the the piece a lot of people struggle to actually get their hands on uh, though one shouldn't ignore, uh, one shouldn't ignore, by the way, uh, 
uh, that you will have Battlegrounds from the very start. So, you know, Stormpike or other options are going to be available, and a lot more items are going to be available from the start. It's kind of hard because 60 upgrades hasn't really made a version for Classic Fresh. It's, it can be difficult. Uh, shoulders with Dire Maul available. Dire Maul North from the Guards, Bulky, Iron, Spalters, um, Strength, Stamina, Spirit, which is useless but good defense. Your other choices are Stone Form or Ebon Steel or uh, decent uh, or valor if you so desire though there's going to be plenty of competition for those of course or the wailing nightbane pauldrons from the unforgiven from strat live uh, cloak redoubt cloak from uh, dire mall North from the tribute so you're going to be doing quite a bit of dire mall uh, chess piece, you do have the choice of getting the ornate and Mantium breastplate from dreams but the chrome a uh, crush chest plate gives you the same amount of defense, just slightly less stamina, uh, slightly less armor, but a good amount of strength, so it's better for the sake of threat if you know, threat is going to be an issue. Uh, bracers, not many great options, of course. You you can go with the, the uh, UBRS ones, or you can get the Bracers of Heroism. They're not really that difficult to get. They're the first piece. The Valor Bracers that you require for these are BOE, so Give it a bit of time, you will see plenty of them on Action House, or you can get them yourself. Weapon. Uh, Weapon-wise, Mirror Song from Scholomance is a is a really solid choice because it's very easy to acquire, and it's a pretty solid weapon uh, to begin with. Or you can get Dalrin's main hand a weapon, though good luck with that, since a lot of people will want to get Dalrin. But hey, if you can pick it up, uh, pick up Dalrin, that's a good choice. Or for hum, uh, since you're uh, since this is for human, you can actually start working on getting Quellstar of course, uh, since Dire Maul will be available from the start. Of course, you still have to kill Anixia, uh, but yeah, try and get the Quellstar. It's going to be a really good weapon to have from the start. Uh, of course, for Horde, uh, there's a bunch of axes available, plenty of weapons uh, available. Just removing that, like Bone Slicing Hackett is actually one that I personally. Uh, prefer to use um, Axe of the Deep Woods, all those kind of weapons available. Uh, shield, Draconian, Deflector, no discussion about this. Defense, Stamina, Fire Resistance, really good shield. UBRS, get it quickly. Uh, gauntlets, uh, Bone Drenched, uh, or Bone Clench Gauntlets from Scholomance, Rast, Frost Whisper. Go get these. Stamina, Strength, uh, Defense. Your uh, alternative choices are. Um, <clears throat> Are things like force imbued gauntlets from dire mall west which may actually be easier to acquire if a lot of people are or stone grip if you can buy them if you can find them or death bone gauntlets uh belt death bone girdle is probably the easiest choice that's uh, gonna be quite available for a lot of people any other choice really is going to be significantly harder to get like the one the better choice really the best in slot choice if we're realistic about it is Breadgum's girdle, sure, no defense, so there's that, but strength and hit, yeah. Problem is, every DPS warrior is gonna want their, to get their fucking hands on this belt, and so you're gonna get screwed in that. Good luck with that. Uh, Pants, Warmaster, Leg Arts from UBRS, um, Strength, Stamina, uh, Dodge, Chance. You can also go with Deathbone uh, if you so desire. Deathbone, so do a lot of Skullamance runs if you're so, so willing. Or leg plates of the Eternal Guardians from, for a lot of defense and armor from the Chest of the Seven and BRD. Uh, or war, uh, wraith, uh, wraith plate uh, leggings from Scalamance and some other options, of course, available like leg plates of heroism and all that kind of stuff. So choices available. Uh, rings, uh, various choices of rings, some better than others. Um, one of the ones that's pretty easy to get is the Nagel Ring from BRD, defense, stamina, and doing arcane, so a Forn's aura basically when uh, you get struck a bit of armor. Not the greatest, not the greatest ring choices available from the very start. Of course, you do have uh, various uh, items from uh, Dire Maul. Like Dire Maul, it does have a fairly substantial impact, of course, in terms of your gear. Or rather, I would say that it makes it a lot easier. So your second ring, one of the rings you should absolutely get is Tarnished Elven Ring. But remember, Alterac Valley is going to be in from the very start. So if that's the case, get the AV ring. Start working on that, get your reputation, get the fucking AV ring, because that's going to be worth it. Trinket-wise, 
Hand of Justice, Black Hand's Breath, uh, can't do wrong with that. You can also get Force of Will um, and some other choices that are available here as well. Uh, but generally I would get at least one of these and certainly one of these uh, options is, uh, is going to be uh, available uh, for you uh, as uh, uh, gonna be available for you. Uh, now obviously not Black Hand's uh, Breath for Alliance, though there are some some other choices as well uh, so you, what you can get as alliance if you're playing alliance you can just get force of War or counter attack lodestone like this would be a set for alliance like force of will hand of justice get hand of justice it's worth it um ranged weapon satyr's bow from dire mall it's all the way up here uh or you can get black row from lbrs if you're so fucking lucky if you're so lucky as to get the good uh, good luck i did a lot of LBRS runs. I never saw this fucking crossbow once. Satyr's bow is fairly consistent, is far more consistent in terms of drop chance. Get the Satyr's bow. If you want to replace it later on, go ahead. But Satyr's bow should be pretty easy enough to acquire. And that's your set. That's what you should go for as a protection warrior at the start. Oh, I forgot boots. Uh, I forgot to scroll over the boots. Boot wise, uh, boot wise, uh, rip steel. Foot guards from LPR is probably your best starting choice. You can, of course, get boots of valor or some other choices that uh, that you uh, that you do have available, like master cannoneer's boots or some other choices or uh, boots of avoidance, which are going to be BOE. So you do have some choices available for you in terms of boots. Not great choices, to be clear. There's many choices that are, let's say, subpar at the start. Uh, Dire Maul certainly does make the gearing a lot less frustrating uh, to deal with at the start because if you didn't have the cloak, uh, you would have to do. <clears throat> uh, if you didn't have to, if you didn't have like the redoubt cloak, you have to uh, go do Stratholme for like something like the Stone Skin, as an example, or maybe the Emperor's New Cape or something along those lines. So it just simplifies the gearing, makes it a lot less frustrating and admittedly faster. But that's all there is to say here, really. Quasi signing out, don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.